Hi everyone, welcome to today's Current Affairs Daily Notes. Today we are going to discuss India's no first use nuclear doctrine. I'm Ritwisha from GK Today and let us begin. India's no first use doctrine on the use of nuclear weapons is open for change in the future and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has indicated that reflecting thinking within the establishment that no policy is written in stone and could be modified to deal with current realities. So today we are going to discuss the following. What is the nuclear doctrine? What is the history of India's nuclear program? Along with why did we choose no first use? What are the arguments for no first use? What are the arguments against no first use? What will abandoning its no first use stance mean for India? And we'll also take a little peek at what a nuclear war really means and what is the cost with an example from World War II. And what is the best possible way forward for India? We begin with what is a nuclear doctrine. A nuclear doctrine states how a nuclear weapon state would employ its nuclear weapons both during peace and war. That is how it uses its weapons and how it uses them during the time of peace and the time of war. Now this doctrine helps to establish a deterrence via adversary. Through the nuclear doctrine, a state can communicate its intention and resolve to the enemy. So it can tell the world whether it is willing to use its weapons during a wartime situation or it only does so in retaliation to seek revenge for something done to it. Now the doctrine also guides the state's response during war as we discussed. What is the history of India's nuclear program? The nuclear program of India was initiated in the late 1940s under the guidance of Homi J. Baba. Nehru the then Prime Minister was against nuclear weapons, so he pleaded with superpowers around the world for comprehensive nuclear disarmament. However, the nuclear arsenal kept rising. And when Communist China conducted the nuclear tests in October 1964, the five nuclear powers at that time, the US, the USSR, UK, France and China, which are also the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council, had tried to impose the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty of 1968 on the rest of the world. Now, India is one of the five countries that either did not sign it or signed it but withdrew, thus becoming part of a list that includes Pakistan, Israel, North Korea and South Sudan. Now, India has always considered the Non-Proliferation Treaty as discriminatory and refused to sign it. India has opposed the international treaties aimed at non-proliferation since they were selectively applicable to the non-nuclear powers and legitimized the monopoly of the five nuclear weapons powers. Now, the first nuclear explosion undertaken by India was in May 1974 in Pokhran. India argued that it was committed to the policy of using nuclear power only for peaceful purposes. India also opposed the indefinite extension of the Non-Proliferation Treaty in 1995 and also refused to sign the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and India also conducted a second series of nuclear tests in May 1998 demonstrating its capacity to use nuclear energy for military purposes. Pakistan soon followed, thereby increasing vulnerability of the region to nuclear exchange. The international community was extremely critical of the nuclear tests in the subcontinent and sanctions were imposed on both India and Pakistan, but they were subsequently waived. What is the no first use doctrine for India? So after 1998 nuclear test, India enunciated a doctrine of no first use of nuclear weapons. Now this doctrine was formally adopted in January 2003. So what it says is that nuclear weapons will only be used in retaliation against a nuclear attack on Indian territory or on Indian forces anywhere. That is we will not preemptively use nuclear weapons. Since the adoption of nuclear doctrine, India has said consistently that its nuclear weapons were based on staggering and punitive retaliation in case the deterrence had failed. Pakistan, by contrast, has openly threatened India with the use of nuclear weapons on multiple occasions, beginning from the time the two nations were not even acknowledged nuclear powers. So what are the arguments for no first use? What are its advantages? 
the no first use policy facilitates restrained nuclear weapons program without tactical weapons and a complicated command and control system since we are not going to use these weapons first we don't need to have a complicated setup for it because we are trying not to use them we will only use it in case someone attacks us first which is in a war situation which is why we don't need to maintain the establishment the doctrine minimizes the probability of nuclear use by avoiding the deployment of weapons on hair trigger alert and keeping an arms race in check that is the weapons aren't always deployed ready to use they are stored to be used only in case of a crisis the doctrine also reduces the chances of unnecessary chaos at the onus of taking the decision to escalate a nuclear use lies on the adversary that is india doesn't need to be in a situation where it's always deliberating whether it should be using its nuclear arsenal it's only to be used when someone else has already taken the decision also strict adherence to this doctrine can help strengthen india's efforts to gain membership in nuclear supplier group and united nation security council as well so what are some arguments against no first use the idea of no first use of nuclear weapons has been rejected by some nuclear weapon states and accepted only at a declared level by most if not by all of the others now nuclear weapons are often seen as an antidote to conventional inferiority as the inferior party will seek to deter conventional attack by threatening a nuclear response the first use nuclear doctrine introduces an element of nuclear risk to any war contemplated by the superior state as it is hard for the potential attacker to confidently calculate that it can achieve victory at an acceptable cost when there is a possibility of nuclear escalation In India the no first use policy has been called into question on the grounds that it allows Pakistan to take the initiative while restricting India's options both militarily and it puts India in a disadvantageous position as well So Pakistan has a low nuclear threshold and its policy of using its nuclear umbrella to foment subconventional conflict in India is the principal reason behind the debate around India's no first use policy So as it happens Pakistan does keep threatening India with a nuclear attack and India has this policy where it is never going to attack first so that has been seen historically as the main argument for people who are against the no first use doctrine as it happens we are letting the enemy choose the time and place of attack and we are only going to retaliate so this is the only argument that is for removing no first use which is also the reason that no first use policy right now is on shaky grounds because of the escalating tensions between pakistan and india so what will abandoning its no first use policy mean for india with drying the policy and making a declaration to that effect can affect india's status as a responsible nuclear power it will affect india's image to the world such a step will abrogate india's commitment to the universal goal of nuclear disarmament and upset the region in balance in the subcontinent so this region of india pakistan it's a very politically unstable region given that our neighbors don't get along with us and india's commitment to not start a nuclear war is one of the many reasons that there is some stability at the moment and if we decide to abandon this policy it can affect the stability in the region not only that india upholds this image of being a responsible nuclear power to the world which will get tarnished if we do decide to pull out from this policy and also there's a universal goal where every nuclear power will gradually disarm nuclear weapons are not something that people want to hold on to because of its destructive nature it's just self assured destruction which is why there is a push towards disarming if india now decides that no first use is no longer a, a policy that we will follow this would mean that we are pulling away from that commitment as well now further this doctrine if abolished would signal a first use posture by india thus reducing the space for conventional warfare between the nuclear threshold that any war with india will mean india can use its nuclear weapons which means traditional warfare is no longer an option 
This could severely corrode India's ability to limit Pakistan's offensive tactics and policies at the conventional level. That is, nuclear war kind of becomes the first option. Moreover, China's expansionist policies cannot be deterred by revising the doctrine. The decision to abandon the doctrine can send a deliberate signal of provocation to China, which is also a nuclear power. Now, nuclear preemption is a costly policy as well. It requires massive investment, not only in the weapons and delivery systems, but also in intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance infrastructure. That is, we need to be ready all the time. What happens in states that have nuclear power but do not have this no first use policy is their nuclear weapons are always trigger happy. That is, they are always ready to be uh, used. And that requires a huge establishment of huge infrastructure which becomes financially very costly which India may or may not be able to afford at the moment. Now India has yet to induct the multiple re-entry vehicle technology in its missiles which is fundamental to eliminating hardened nuclear targets. That is we are technologically lacking to actually abandon the no first use stance. First use doctrine will also require to devolve controls of nuclear weapons from the scientific enclave to military for their eventual use. Currently, it's the nuclear scientists in India or the organizations which conduct nuclear research which hold on to the weapons. Having a no first use policy will mean it's the military that has to take care of it all. Moreover, the after effects of the nuclear fallout, depending on the magnitude of the nuclear explosions, could pose existential threat to humanity itself. Of course, a nuclear attack is not a child's game. It could pose serious threat to not only the part that is attacked, there is huge areas that get affected. So it could become an existential crisis to humanity, which is why we should seriously rethink before taking off the stance. Now, nuclear war is not a joke. It's not a decision to be made lightly. And to take cognizance of the matter, we need look no further than World War II. The detonation of atomic bombs over the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945 resulted in horrific casualties and devastation. The long-term effects of radiation exposure also increased cancer rates. There were acute disorders caused by the heat rays, fire blast and radiation, which appeared immediately after bombing, but they subsided in four to five months. However, even after all those were healed, the effects of the atomic bomb continued gen after generations. The after effects included excessive growth of scar tissues overburn. It included leukemia. The number of survivors who contracted leukemia increased noticeably over the next five to six years. Even 10 years after the bombing, the survivors began contracting thyroid, breast, lung and other cancers. Even babies died inside their mother's wombs and the ones that were born were suffering from brain damage. Nuclear weapons in the world today are used as deterrents or power play. Using them is just mutually assured destruction. So what is the best possible way forward for India? Now, security is not a static concept. It's a dynamic concept that's always evolving. And all doctrines need periodic reviews. And in the case of India, the same thing is applicable. If Indian policymakers feel a need to review the nation's nuclear doctrine, they should do that with all the costs involved in mind. Now, a sound policy debate can only ensue if the costs and benefits of a purported policy shift are discussed and debated widely and every nook and corner is taken care of. Also, India must gradually revise its posture of active deterrence to dissuasive deterrence by building up its infrastructure along the border and improving the surveillance and warning capabilities, among other things. Like India, China too has a no first use policy. So it provides an opportunity to work jointly towards a global no first use nuclear order. That's all for today's video. Since nuclear policy is an important development in today's world, to ensure all of you have a grasp of the basics, tomorrow at 5 p.m. there will be a live test on this topic. Join in to test your knowledge. And if you want to brush up on the topic before that, you can re-watch this video or you can simply follow the link in the description below. And if you like our work, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.